Hello everybody, Jim here from Quail Hollow Bird Farm. And what we're going to do today is we're getting ready to make an automatic watering system for our quail. Uh, we'll take a look in here and show you the inside of the pen. Maybe you can see all them quail running around in there. And we raise probably about eight to 10,000 quail a year here on the farm. So what we're going to do is watering them is real work intensive when you're having that many quail. So we've got these blue barrels right here. Now we've done a video before on the blue barrels and making a water system and I'm refined it just a little bit. So we're going to be taking and we're going to be fastening our barrel right to the side of the building here. And this barrel wants to be at least the level of the watering system, if not a little higher, because it's all gravity fed. And then I'm going to run my pipes. Now you can see I have my water feeds going to be right there to fill the barrel up. And then we'll run our pipes to the pens, which run all the way down through here. So I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process of what I do. And hopefully, uh, if you want to make a watering system like this, you can. And if you have any questions, then just feel free to ask. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to lag bolt this 2x6 I have down here with these 3-inch lag bolts. This, this, this tank is going to weigh a lot, and I'm going to go ahead and get the platform built. Alright guys, now I'm back to you here with the next step. Uh, this is the same day, just a different time. My wife told me I had to put a hat on because I looked bald on camera. So, anyhow, what I've done is I've added two of these braces here on each end these are for two by sixes and the reason I've done it is because there's going to be a lot of weight on here now my boards are going to be coming straight across like so for my platform but I've also got to have a rigid uh, foundation frame on the outside so that's what my intentions are that's what I'm going to do next so let's go ahead and get started with the next step okay so we're going to mark our four by four here which is going to be at 31 inches and this allows for six inches here to screw and fasten my two by sixes for to give more support because like I said there's going to be a lot of weight uh, that's going to be involved with that 55 gallon drum full of water now another trick you might do when you're using a skill saw is that the blade won't cut all the way through with one cut so one thing that I do is when I make my measurements I'll mark all four sides with a square or at least three sides because you're only going to get to cut three sides okay and by doing this what's going to happen is it's going to make your cuts come out even because the skill saw won't reach all the way through on one cut let me go ahead and get my saw all right now that i got my saw let me go ahead and make sure i'm adjusted to the maximum depth and we'll go ahead and cut this four by four I'm going to make one cut here. Like so. And I'm going to turn it. I'm going to follow my line right through. And I'm going to do it one more time. There we go. And as you can see, that's going to give you a really nice looking uh, cut on your 4x4 okay got a little place right there because the saw may have been off a little bit on the on the angle but all in all that's a whole lot better cut okay we'll get ready to assemble this once again I'm using three inch screws which will be a whole lot better let me get the camera down here a little bit so you can see what's going the hell on I'm using three inch screws, which I definitely want to use because I'm looking for maximum strength. Okay, I'll put a couple of screws in here. And then I'll put my other piece on here and put a couple more screws in here when it comes to this angle. And this is going to give you a really good sturdy base. When I'm all done, I'm going to go down the bottom and shovel this out a little bit and put a couple of rocks on around the bottom. 
to make sure it gives it kind of like a foundation for the poles to set on. Let me get this back end screwed in here. Okay, so I'm making the last cuts of my frame before I took, put my top boards on. I have my posts all set and I'll show you in just a minute. I've got a little piece of cement block under each one and that's to add like to act like a little footing to help support the weight. Make this final cut. Alright. Now I get ready to put this on. I'm going to put two screws into my post and the other two screws into my cross section here. piece even though I still have screws in there I want plenty of support on this maybe it's a little overkill but I want it good and rugged there now we'll do the same here on the other side Four of them big three inch sheetrock screws in here should be more than sufficient. Alright, if you take a look down here, like I said on my post, I put a couple pieces of cement block that I cut out of a broken block I had. And that's just going to act as a footer to support this beam so it doesn't sink down in the mud as bad. And there's what the frame looks like. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut up my 2x6s and lay me a base right across the top here for the barrel to sit on and then we'll get started on assembling the barrel and the water pipe so I went ahead and I finished my platform for my 55 gallon uh, water drum and I've got me some rocks and, and something for a footing underneath my 4x4 four four legs because with all the weight it's going to want to settle in the ground some I don't want it to I want it to stay as level as possible so I'm going to go ahead and um, get the drum on here set up the way I wanted to and we'll go ahead and start plumbing it in to the both coil pens right here so that these guys can have water whenever they want it. Alright before I start plumbing I want to show you some of the things that I'm doing here. I'm going to put my hole in my barrel here up about I would say probably about three to four inches above the bottom of the barrel uh, because it bevels and I want it on a flat surface. Now what I'm using is what they call a washing machine valve, okay? And it's just a simple valve and what I will do is it has these two white washers. I'll drill my three quarter inch hole and I will put this into one side of the barrel. and. You can either seal this with silicone. I like to use a piece of rubber and put it on both sides and then you can tighten down this ring right here, secure on the barrel. Silicone will work good, but the only problem with it is, is after you've moved this valve a little bit back and forth, it'll start to leak. So that's a washing machine valve and that's the valve I like to use because it has this big long neck that allows you to put into the barrel and screw and seal at the same time. Now. Uh, this is what I'm going to use for the actual waterers for the quail. Now these little waterers have little cups with a little yellow thing. And what the bird does, he comes along and he'll peck in that and he'll hit that yellow thing. And every time he pecks and gets water, that will put water into these little orange cups. I have uh, two bars with five on each and that's enough for this one quail pen. And I'm going to plumb actually plumb from this first barrel into this pen and then when I drop down to the other pen which I'll show you later on I will drop down with a piece of hose and connect it that way now to hold up the these pipes on the 2x4 structure inside I have these black rings and then simply just slide on there and you can screw them to the 2x4s every couple feet and that will help hold the pipe up all right so they're just black rings you can buy it buy at your plumbing box store place like Lowe's or something like that 
Now you don't have to make an elaborate system like we're making. Understand, a lot of the videos we do, we do for the bigger quail or chicken farmer. We are a commercial farm. We do uh, sell a lot of poultry and raise a lot of poultry as, as well as up to at least 10,000 quail a year. So we need a really good significant water supply for our birds. I don't like to plumb into the well with a pump system because you have pressure involved. Should you go off someplace and you have a break then your pump is going to run continuously and <clears throat> that's not good. So I like to use these gravity feed systems. We have one at our chicken uh, coop which we house about 150 chickens that are our breeding chickens. And that 55 gallon drum will last about a week, week and a half, depends on the weather and the temperature. This drum will probably last about with the amount of quail that we're going to have in here, which is going to be probably around five to 800 quail in this one pen. It'll last about a week, okay? So you just have to watch what you're doing there. Now understand what I'm trying to say is that we're building this on a bigger scale because we raise a lot of quail. Now, if you're a hunter out there and you're going to build a big pen, you're going to raise three, four, five hundred quail, you might want to think about this. But if you're the average guy out there that's raising a few quail for pets, for eggs, or for, for meat, then you could build the system and scale down and just make it out of a five-gallon bucket. You put this stone on top, which you can get from your supply companies that will let air in so it doesn't create a vacuum, and then you just plumb in the bottom just like, just like it is right here with a couple of fittings on a five gallon bucket and that will last you oh a few days at a time okay and that's really good for the small scale farmer all right I'm going to go ahead and start plumbing this in a little bit and it's just going to be simple cutting the pipe routing it around and hooking it all up and I'll show you a few steps as I go everybody I have finished my water project uh, I probably look a little bit worse than I did when I started it's got hot out here and I think I finished just in time before it got up to about 95 degrees so I got the plumbing done and there's actually water going through the hose let me go ahead and do you give you a quick rundown of what I've done right here I think I've answered and shown you everything if you have any questions about this video please uh, send us a comment or send us an email we'll have our phone number and our emails up here during this video so you can go ahead and get in contact with us so let's show you what I've done we've come off from here like I said with our valve for our um, washer machine valve or shut off all right and it just works like this is simply how it how it works Okay, so if you take a look down here in the barrel, you can see our connector with our rubber washer. And that's just the rubber washer that I used. It was a piece of old inner tube that I had found someplace. And I took that washer and put it on the inside and tightened up the two nuts on the outside. And as you can see, there's no leak, so it worked really, really well. Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit about the pipe I've used. I've used a half inch uh, pipe here. And what I did is I used the irrigation pipe and just a little tidbit of information. Spend the extra money and go ahead and get regular water pipe. It's thicker walled. The irrigation pipe, it works good. It's easier to, it's easy to work with, but it kinks and it's thin walled so it won't stand a lot of pressure it's okay for this application but you don't i wouldn't use it if you're going to have any amount of pressure on it or anything like that now we're going to go ahead, go ahead and go in the pen here and i'm going to show you what we had going on inside and see if our little waters are working now we're going to walk in here slow because bob white quail they will flare up and fly around the pen right here. They're all right if you go slow, but they don't like to be spooked. 
couple of bob white there. He's going to get ready to check out his watering system. All right. What we got going on here is I come in from our water tank with an elbow and came to our three-quarter inch pipe with a coupler. And then I took a few days ago and went ahead and assembled this pipe. You can get these waterers right here at any uh, supply company, chicken supply or, or bird farm supply company, okay? And you use a three-quarter inch piece of pipe, you drill a three-eighths hole and put either uh, pipe tape or pipe uh, sealer of some kind on here and it will screw right into that 3 8 hole. Let's charge these up and see if we've got any water here. There it is right there. Just push these down what happens the quail comes in he'll peck on that and when he does it will give him water. These work good for chickens too guys. And I'm just going to pre-fill all these up for the quail to get them started. You can see everything's charged up and working here. And they're easily, easy to clean. You just pop this off and you can clean them. Now, I ended my pipe with a reducer and a connector and I went to a piece of regular hose. And it goes down to our Conturnix quail pen. As you can see in there, and we'll take in there and see if the uh, everything is working in there. Right, and some of you might remember this pen from the previous video we did here back a few years ago. This is our our big flight pen. And what, and what we do is we raise quail in the brooder house. And from there, we take them out of the brooder house and we put them in the pen right here, which is what we call a grow-up pen. And they'll grow up there and get acclimated to the weather and they're protected from the weather also. And then when they're ready, we'll move them into this pen, which is the flight pen. And they'll get even more acclimated to the ground and everything in here. Let's go in and check our water system. You got to be careful because these birds here, they will sneak out on you. I kind of classify these as uh, Conturnix quail. They're kind of like chickens, if you ask me, but um, they're a friend, lot friendlier quail. Oh yeah, we got water circulating through here already. There we go. Our pipe comes down. It goes to an elbow and then to another adapter, uh, another reducer. All right, and same thing here. Plenty of water, as you can see, each one. And all they got to do is come here and, and get the water out and they'll be all set. So, okay, everybody. I, I hope I showed you something that might help you out on your farm. This is a really large system for us. And uh, we do have other automated type systems that we'll show you here in the future. But this works really well as far as taking care of the quail in these pens. If you don't raise this as many quail as we do, then you don't need as big of a system. You can make it like with a five gallon bucket if you choose to. But it's so work intensive on the farm here, watering the poultry and the quail every day, it takes about two hours. And this is just a way for us to cut back. Now all we have to do is fill these 55 gallon drums about once every week or every couple weeks and they've got an automatic watering system that we don't have to worry about. If you should need to add uh, minerals or chemicals to the water, you can do so and, and stir it up in the drum and it will automatically dispense the chemicals for you. So if, I, if you have any questions, if you'd like to know more about the farm, if you'd like to uh, buy some quail or some chickens or poultry, we have them here, call the number at the bottom of the screen, check out our website at quailhollowbirdfarm.com and give us a call if we have any questions okay i think i covered everything but who knows i probably forgot most everything but i'll be sure to answer your question thanks for watching be sure to watch our next video here on the farm